The Providence Island Colony was established in 1631 by English Puritans on what is now the Colombian department of Isla de Providencia, about 200 kilometers (120 miles) east of the coast of Nicaragua. Although intended to be a model Puritan colony, it also functioned as a base for privateers operating against Spanish ships and settlements in the region. In 1641, the Spanish overran and destroyed the colony. Topic location Isla de Providencia, the adjacent Santa Catalina Island, and four smaller islands lie within a wide lagoon surrounded by a massive coral reef. They are the visible part of a stratovolcano that rises from the sea floor, extinct for the last four million years. The total area of the islands is 18 square kilometers 6.9 square miles. Providencia is 6.5 by 4 kilometers 4.0 by 2.5 miles. Santa Catalina Island to the north is 1.5 by 1.25 kilometers, 0.93 by 0.78 miles. Providencia has a central peak 360 meters, 1180 feet high from which spines run down to the sea enclosing fertile valleys. Temperatures are around 29 degrees Celsius, 84 degrees Fahrenheit all year. Easterly trade winds are normal during all seasons, bringing the most rain in the autumn. Summers are relatively dry. The surrounding coral reefs make the approach difficult for those who do not know the waters. The two larger islands were once one, called Santa Catalina by the Spanish, but in the late 17th century, buccaneers cut a neck of land between them to make a secure retreat on what is now the small island of Santa Catalina. Topic origin of the colony The island was known to French and Dutch pirates, but apparently was first visited by English ships in 1628. In that year, the Puritan Robert Rich, 2nd Earl of Warwick, sent three privateer ships to the West Indies. They reached San Andres, to the south of Santa Catalina, and landed 30 men there to plant tobacco for snuff. Sussex Kamek, with his bark Warwick and Summer Islands, remained on San Andreas. Daniel Elfrith returned to England via Bermuda to report the discovery. Elfrith told the governor of Bermuda, his son-in-law Philip Bell, of their findings. In March 1629, Bell wrote to his cousin Sir Nathaniel Rich announcing the discovery of the two islands. Bell's letter described the island as lying in the heart of the Indies and the mouth of the Spaniards, thus it was an excellent base for privateering against the Spanish ships. Bell considered that the island would also provide excellent revenue from tobacco and other crops. Leading members of the company included the Earl of Warwick, his brother Henry Rich, 1st Earl of Holland and their cousin Sir Nathaniel Rich, William Fines, Lord Say and Sell, and Robert Greville, Lord Brooke. Philip Bell sailed to Providence in 1629, taking several Bermudians with him including whites and blacks. In November 1630 the Providence Island Company decided that Captain Daniel Elfrith was to be governor until he returned, after which Captain Philip Bell would be sole governor. Each adventurer shareholder was to obtain as many men and boys as were willing to serve, and the good ones were to be shipped next January. In February 1631 Captain William Rudyard was appointed commander of the settlers sailing from England to Providence Island in the Seaflower. In April 1632 the company learned that the Seaflower had arrived. About 80 Bermudians moved to Providence in 1631. Some became involved in religious disputes, and were sent back to Bermuda. In May 1632 the company instructed the master of the charity, who was taking another 150 settlers to Providence, that no passengers were to be brought home from Providence without a license. Topic colonial life Until 1635 the company discouraged planters from bringing their wives and children. To help preserve order, the company ordered servants and other single people to live in families. Governor Bell was instructed to distribute all the inhabitants into several families whereof one shall the chief." This chief was responsible for ensuring his family did their duty and was to lead them in prayer twice a day. The company forbade swearing, drunkenness or profaning the Sabbath, and ordered Bell to "...take care that idleness as the nurse of all vice be carefully eschewed." Bell was instructed to seize and destroy "...cards and dice and tables," that had been sent to the island. 
Apart from his moral duties, the instructions that Bell received from the company in 1631 included arranging lodgings for the minister, preventing men from planting tobacco but making them plant corn, and if possible sugar cane, building houses, a church and fortifications against possible attack by the Spanish. An important difference between Providence Island and the Massachusetts Bay Colony was that the Massachusetts settlement was led by resident gentry, who allowed the colony to evolve towards self-sufficiency, while Providence Island was ruled by absentee grandees who kept the settlers totally dependent on them. The colonists were only tenants, with half their profits going to the investors in the company. With a limited stake in the colony, the colonists were unimaginative about ways to improve it. There was a glut of tobacco on the market. The Chesapeake, Barbados and St. Kitts colonies were producing far more tobacco and of better quality. The directors tried to encourage the planters to grow other crops such as silk grass, cotton, sugar cane, pomegranates, figs or juniper berries. However, despite a collapse in prices in 1634, the planters still persisted in growing tobacco. Labor on Providence Island was originally undertaken by indentured servants from England, although Bell brought some enslaved Africans from Bermuda. Around 1634 to 1635 the four-year terms of the indentured servants expired, and planters demanded the right to use slaves in their place. One colonist, Samuel Rishworth spoke out against this practice, saying that Christians should not hold slaves. Bell silenced this man on instructions from the company, so he could encourage the slaves to seek their freedom from their masters. By 1635 there was a population of 500 white men, 40 women, 90 blacks and a few children, scattered across the island. The village of New Westminster had just 30 houses, mostly of timber. Only the church and the governor's house were of brick. Forty guns were distributed between 13 forts at different points on the island, making no one point particularly strong. Topic. Internal problems. When the English arrived they found a small group of Dutch privateers living there. Elfrith invited the well-known privateer Diego El Mulatto to the island. Samuel Axe, one of the military leaders, also accepted letters of mark from the Dutch authorizing privateering. The settlers were concerned that the presence of these men would draw Spanish retaliation, and also resented having to contribute to building and manning the defences. In 1632 they were near mutiny, led by their chaplain, Louis Morgan. There were also quarrels over religious practices, with the captains sometimes advocating stricter practices than the settlers were willing to follow. The ministers were often inexperienced, argumentative or otherwise unfit. Benjamin Rudyard wrote to Governor Bell in 1633, We well hoped according to our intentions, that we had planted a religious colony in the Isle of Providence, instead whereof we find the root of bitterness plentifully planted amongst you, an industrious supplanting one of another, and not a man the heir of place a strong thing to consider but he doth both accuse and is accused, these are uncomfortable froites of religion. At first the island was vulnerable to attack. Samuel Axe and Workmaster Goodman were given responsibility for fortification. Both men became involved in a dispute with Governor Philip Bell and left with Sussex Kamak to Cabo Gracias a Dios on the Mosquito Coast to the west, in what is now Nicaragua. Other men also moved to the Cape. Gun carriages, ropes and powder were spoiled by the rain on Providence Island because the settlers did not have boards to make sheds, and did not have sawyers to make boards. At the start of 1634 the Reverend Hope Sherard reported that there were far too few men to man the forts or repel a landing force, and only enough ammunition for one day's fight. On 30 July 1634 the company wrote to Captain Sussex Kamak approving of his achievements in opening up trade with the Mosquito Indians, but said there was discontent in Providence, caused by so many men having been taken from it, and that the island needed strengthening. They hoped that Kamak could allow Captain Axe to return to Providence to work on the fortifications there. In June 1634 Captain William Rudyard told the investors in England that the island had no worth other than as a base for privateering, but if properly fortified, the island could be held against any force by 600 men. In December 1634, a Dutch captain told the company that the fortifications were now handsome, and their ordnance fit to prevent the approach of ships. Topic. Hostilities with the Spanish The Spanish did not hear of the Providence Island colony until 1635, when they captured some Englishmen in Portobello, on the Isthmus of Panama. 
Francisco de Merga, Governor and Captain General of Cartagena, dispatched Captain Gregorio de Castellar y Mantilla and engineer Juan de Samovila Texada to destroy the colony. The Spanish fleet anchored outside New Westminster in July 1635, and Castellar sent a messenger to demand the surrender of Providence Island. Governor Bell refused. The Spanish launched an attack at a poorly defended point, but were repelled by gunfire from the heights and were forced to retreat, in haste and disorder. The Spanish took prisoners, who told them of the YSLA de Mosquito, presumably the Mosquito Keys. Castellar and Samovilla were sent back in October 1635 to search for the Mosquito Island, but they were unable to find it. After the attack, under pressure from the company, King Charles I of England issued letters of mark to the Providence Island Company on 21 December 1635. These authorized raids on the Spanish in retaliation for a raid that had destroyed the English colony on Tortuga earlier in 1635. The company could in turn issue letters of marque to subcontracting privateers who used the island as a base, for a fee. This soon became an important source of profit. Thus the company made an agreement with the merchant Maurice Thompson under which Thompson could use the island as a base in return for 20% of the booty. In March 1636 the company dispatched Captain Robert Hunt on the blessing to assume the governorship of what was now viewed as a base for privateering. Various changes were made with Hunt's appointment. His passage and that of his wife and three children was paid, and he received 100 acres of land with 20 servants to work it, but he was paid no salary. Also, the company refused to pay for the defense of the island. On the other hand, the colonists were encouraged to engage in privateering, paying the company one-fifth of the value of the plunder. According to Thomas Gage, talking of the Spanish treasure fleet sailing between Panama and Havana in 1637, the greatest fear that possessed the Spanish in this voyage, was the island of Providence, whence they feared lest some English ships should come against them with great strength. They cursed the English in it, and called the island a den of thieves and pirates, wishing the King of Spain would take some course with it, or else that it would prove very prejudicial to the Spaniards, lying near the mouth of the Desaguadero, and so endangering the frigates of Granada, and standing between Portobel and Cartagena, and so threatening the galleons, and the king's yearly and mighty treasure. Depredations continued, leading to growing tension between England and Spain, which were still technically at peace. On the 11th of July 1640 the Spanish ambassador in London complained again, saying he understands that there is lately brought in at the Isle of Wight by one, Captain James Reiskiner James Reiskimer, a ship very richly laden with silver, gold, diamonds, pearls, jewels, and many other precious commodities taken by him in virtue of a commission of the said Earl of Warwick from the subjects of His Catholic Majesty to the infinite wrong and dishonor of his Catholic Majesty, to find himself thus injured and violated, and his subjects thus spoiled, robbed, impoverished and murdered in the highest time of peace, league and amity with your Majesty. Nathaniel Butler was the last full governor of Providence Island, replacing Robert Hunt in 1638. Hunt remained on the island. Butler had formerly been governor of Bermuda, where he had caused extensive fortifications to be erected, and he saw fortifying the island as his main task. Butler had shown he could get on with the Puritans in Bermuda. In Providence Island he was less successful in this aspect of his role, and found it hard to put up with the ministers. Butler returned to England in 1640, satisfied that the fortifications were adequate, deputizing the governorship to Captain Andrew Carter. In 1640, Don Melcher de Aguilera, governor and Captain General of Cartagena, resolved to remove the intolerable infestation of pirates on the island. Taking advantage of having infantry from Castile and Portugal wintering in his port, he dispatched 600 armed Spaniards from the fleet and the Presidio, and 200 black and mulatto militiamen under the leadership of Don Antonio Maldonado y Tejada, his sergeant major, in six small frigates and a galleon. The troops were landed on the island, and a fierce fight ensued. The Spanish were forced to withdraw when a gale blew up and threatened their ships. Carter had the Spanish prisoners executed. When the Puritan leaders protested against this brutality, Carter sent four of them home in chains. Capture The Spanish acted decisively to avenge their defeat. General Francisco Díaz Pimienta was given orders by King Philip IV of Spain, and sailed from Cartagena to Providence with seven large ships, four pinnaces, 1,400 soldiers and 600 seamen, arriving on 19 May 1641. 
At first Pimienta planned to attack the poorly defended east side, and the English rushed there to improvise defences. With the winds against him, Pimienta changed plans and made for the main new Westminster harbour and launched his attack on 24 May. He held back his large ships to avoid damage, and used the pinnaces to attack the forts. The Spanish troops quickly gained control, and once the forts saw the Spanish flag flying over the governor's house, they began negotiations for surrender. On 25 May 1641, Pimienta formally took possession and celebrated Mass in the church. The Spanish took 60 guns, and captured the 350 settlers who remained on the island, others had escaped to the Mosquito Coast. They took the prisoners to Cartagena. The women and children were given a passage back to England. The Spanish found gold, indigo, cochineal and 600 black slaves on the island, worth a total of 500,000 ducats, some of the accumulated booty from the English raids. Rather than destroy the defences, as instructed, Pimienta left a small garrison of 150 men to hold the island and prevent occupation by the Dutch. Later that year, Captain John Humphrey, who had been chosen to succeed Captain Butler as governor, arrived with a large group of dissatisfied settlers from New England. He found the Spanish in occupation. Pimienta's decision to occupy the island was approved in 1643 and he was made a Knight of the Order of Santiago. Topic: <laughs> Later years. The island continued to be strategically important as a fertile island with ample water near to the Spanish main. In January 1666 the Dutch privateer Edward Mansvelt, whose fleet included Henry Morgan's ship, took the island, known by then as Old Providence. In December 1670 Morgan returned to Old Providence, which now had a stone castle, Santa Teresa, and two forts. There were only 190 soldiers, who were overwhelmed by the force of 1,000 buccaneers. Henry Morgan used the island as a base for his raid on Panama in 1670-1671. For a period the island again served as a base for operations against the Spanish. The English remained on the Mosquito Coast, and their protectorate there lasted until 1900. Notes Sources <inaudible> <inaudible> <inaudible>